It should be everybody. So even us, we don't know. We're hearing about the stigma for the first time. We're hearing about this report. The key about this report is that drowning continues to be a neglected public health issue. The key word continues to be a neglected public health issue. This is the information age. We're well into it. Again, we're not building a spaceship. Simple, bullet-pointed information, efficiently and effectively delivered is what, what we need. People don't know the big picture of drowning. That on average, every 90 seconds, a person somewhere in the world dies drowning, which equals about 40 people per hour by the end of this presentation. Two minutes. I'll, I'll skip my, answer, my question and answer session. <laughs> so 400,000 people per year over is the translation, and on average in the United States, 10 people per day die drowning. So 2016, World Health Organization said Zika is a public health issue. Anyone here heard of Zika? I know that's about everybody. How's it transmitted? Mosquitoes. How do you uh, protect yourself from mosquitoes? 2015, drowning, neglect the public health, public health issue. 2016, Zika, public health issue. President Obama, I want a billion dollars of funding for education, outreach, and research for Zika. Water safety? Nothing. I mean, didn't really hear much of anything. The point is that there's a disconnect. Our public officials don't know. People don't know that according to the Center for Disease Control, drowning is a leading cause of accidental death for children 1 to 4, second leading cause of accidental death for children 1 to 14, it's a fifth leading cause of accidental death for the nation as a whole. So if people know this as their common sense, they're going to be safer around water, safer with their children around water. Um, Additional, just bullet point information. People don't know that drowning victims, 80% are male, four out of five drowning victims. The main psychology is that males are risk takers, more susceptible to peer pressure, more uh, opportunities for overestimating their abilities, and these uh, special man skills <laughs> are deadly around water. And they don't know that, so we need for people to know that. And as far as overestimating their ability, the Red Cross did report, Women, what's your swimming ability? We're going to test you on it. Men, what's your swimming ability? We're going to test you on it. Women, about 100% accurate with their swimming ability. How do you think the men did? Overestimate swimming ability by about 50%. I'm going to swim out to that buoy, and then I'm going to wait for rescue. <laughs> I'm not trying to make light of it, but it's kind of like... It, it, it happens that way, unfortunately. And if you don't know, you don't know. If you don't know, you overestimate your swimming ability. Knowing that your swimming ability is not the same in, in a pool as in open water, 100% uh, visibility, consistent water temperature, you know the water depths, open water, winds, waves, dangerous currents, pockets of cold water that could drop 40, 30 degrees, depending on your body of water. People don't know what drowning looks like. There's a Hollywood version, there's an actual version. They don't know that it's facing shore, mouth at water level, head tilted back, her arms are right at her side doing the climbing the ladder motion. She survived. Uh, they don't know foot float and follow, life-saving model for saving their lives. They don't know the emphasis is on floating. My time is done, but I'm going to speed through. People don't know basic water rescue. I'm serious, I'm almost there. They don't know that you know, drowning is a respiratory emergency. It needs rescue breaths. Where do we start reactively? Looking at industries and agencies that may be uh, unhealthy with their sport. So if we look here, this young girl, not in hands-on touch supervision of her parents. She doesn't have a leash. She doesn't have a life vest. We don't know the water temperature. Mom's doing a little better. She's got a leash. Dad, it's not a life jacket he's wearing. It's a baby. No life vest, no leash. So this is the thing, this, this is real, this is a couple weeks ago, Bob took pictures of it out of a, out of a sub magazine, okay? So he has Mansfield, he has a, a jetpack and the baby's behind, yeah. and lifts him out of the water. water. <coughs> so, so, the, so the thing is, is, the industry doesn't know that drowning is leading cause of accidental death, and they should, they should be more responsible. So we need to be compassionate with them and not lose it on them when we educate them. Uh, Northwestern University, one of the most prestigious schools, in the United States, so I'm told. Very, very, very smart to get in there and to be a student there. This was uh, April 10th, this year, just two Mondays ago. A rowing team, 
on a river, cold water, no life jackets, okay? Fell off the boat and um, drowned. If he had a life vest on, he would be alive. But the stigma drowning on social media was kind of taken over. So where do we start? Compassionately addressing it when we see it. There's a press release slide. The presentations are available. It's a template. You fill in your own information. You take some of the bullet points. And when you see it in a media, you contact the writer directly and go from there. So thank you very much. My time, Megan's giving me that frown. <laughs> And some other uh, sign language. Uh, uh, but thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. Sure, thank you. Uh, we are going to welcome back Megan Dodson. No. Oh, okay. Okay, it's Jamie. <laughs> they were giving me mixed signals. <laughs> it's that, it feels like that two o'clock time, even though it's four. Okay, there you go. Megan and I heavily negotiated this next presentation. <laughs> so you do it, no, you do it. So let's see if I did. Uh, okay, so far so good. The rest of the presenters now are obsessed so much over their slides, making sure that they work on the same, you know, the platform that we're using and the version of PowerPoint that we're using. But I had no idea if I actually did slides for myself or not. But um, so we're just talking about messaging, and we've heard some great information from Sherry Jean Katz and from Dave Benjamin. Um, the consortium has a messaging and media committee, and we've been meeting for many months now. Um, we came up with this brochure that we wanted to encapsulate all the best information. You know, we're a community of best practice, and there's a lot of messaging out there, and we gathered as much as we could find from all the different members from all across the eight Great Lakes states in Ontario, and we distilled it down. So we have some, some numbers. Remember, we have to have a mix of, of numbers for the left side of the brain, and the, the stories for the right side of the brain to really engage people and get them to take action. Get some information about the consortium on the back, of our partners and members. And we came up with this phrase. The first one we did, we did our first version last year. We ran a small run of about 7,000, and it said end drowning. That was our mission. That is our mission. We thought, let's put our mission on the cover of our brochure. But then we thought about it some more and thought, that's our mission. That's not necessarily compelling for someone at a brochure stand to pick it up. I don't, you know, that's just that's a big, lofty, aspirational Apollo type goal. Who's going to necessarily pick that up? But if we can focus it, make it more personal, make it about staying safe and not drowning. That can protect them, that can protect their family when they're on vacation. Maybe I'll pick this up and just see what this is about. So stay safe, stay safe, don't drown in the Great Lakes, here's how. Triple alliteration, I have to point out. I'm a big fan of alliteration as a communicator. <laughs> so that's the outside. And then the inside are the key messages that we've distilled down from everyone across the consortium that submitted some. And we categorize them, I like to work in threes, how to avoid, escape, and safely save others. And under avoid, we've got a lot of these key phrases. And I was telling uh, Susan we need to make sure that things rhyme, because that's important. <laughs> so know before you go, stay dry when waves are high. When in doubt, don't go out. Buddy up, steer clear of the pier. You've been hearing these all day long. We need to hear them more and more and more. We need to be sick of them ourselves as water <laughs> safety advocates before anybody else is even going to start to pay attention to them. We have to repeat them. We have to use them in all of our presentations. Any chance we get to talk to the media, to family, to friends, we need to be using these messages. Escaping, don't fight the current, yell for help. I put that one in there. You'll find out why tomorrow when I tell my story. Flip, flip, follow. Absolutely have to have flip, flip, follow. And then safely save others. Don't become a victim. Be a water watcher. Drowning doesn't look like drowning. You know, Hollywood is all waving and screaming and splashing and yelling. And we know from all the other presentations that it doesn't look like that. And we need to communicate that. Save yourself first. Make sure you grab some sort of flotation device before you try to get up on your own and save someone else. Some of our major images, the flow file structure current rip currents. You've seen a lot of these, you're familiar with them. We need to get them out there to everyone we can in as many ways as we can. <coughs> So we printed 20,000 of these. We brought three or four boxes of them. 
If you have some, we'll put some more out before you leave. You can have a stack if you want boxes. We'll get boxes if you really think you can distribute them. If you have any connections with organizations that fill those brochure racks at different places, hotels or, or uh, visitor bureaus, things like that. So, M&Ms. Switching gears a little bit, but not really. This is my approach to communication as a strategist at the University of Michigan. Messages and methods, that's M&Ms. We need a mix of strategic, tactical, and motion, motivational messages delivered via face-to-face -face electronic and print methods. I've taught a whole semester on this one slide. <laughs> um, strategic being very big picture, what are our lofty goals and aspirations and goals and objectives. Tactical, more specific, some of our specific key messages and projects and committee activities. And then of course the motivational message to really try to get through, and we've heard a lot about that from other people, including the, the heartfelt tragic stories that really help motivate people. And then face-to-face -face is the most effective. That's why we're all here today. We can't afford or have the time to get together as frequently as we would like to, but if we can get together at least once a year in person, obviously this is, this is very effective. And then we have other means electronically to stay in touch throughout the year that I'll talk about, as well as print to supplement all that. A lot of people cut off print. Oh, it's too expensive. We just won't do print. You need to have a mix of all three, face-to-face, -face, electronic, and print to be effective with your communication.